Now, uh, let's welcome the second speaker, Mr. Yi Jen Yen, from a Solutions Architect Blackboard, to give a talk on closing the gap between the way students live and the way they learn. All right, good morning, everyone. My name is Jenan, and I'm from Blackboard. Uh, first and foremost, I'm not here to sell anything because uh, you already have it. <laughs> okay, I have a good picture from the 19th century classroom that uh, Dr. Xia spoke about. So, the reason why I show this is not to reemphasize what was already mentioned, but when I, when I saw this picture, one thought came to my mind. So, I, I, I called my five year old boy, preschool, so I asked him, Look at the boys in the room. What do you think they are carrying? And guess what's the answer? Yeah. He said they were carrying iPads. So I think that, that sort of reinforced or it tells the, exactly the message that I'm going to, um, going to bring across today, which is nowadays we are de dealing with a very different group of um, young generation. Okay? If, if you imagine a kid, a three-year-old kid can tell you that things that look like that is an iPad, and he doesn't even, uh, it shows the fact that he, he didn't realize that there's things like, a, you know the small size chalkboard that we used to carry when we were in primary school? Yeah. He didn't know things like that ever existed. So what is relevant to us is that um, kids nowadays or students that you deal with nowadays, they have a very different, they live a very different life from what we have encountered um, during our generation. And you realize that um, in this world today, um, we are really 7 billion people. And in, over the next 15 years, it, was, it is projected to grow to 8, 8 billion. And probably by the end of the century, it's going to be uh, 12 billion um, if the Earth can sustain that population or if the Mayan prophecy doesn't come true by the, that we, the world will end by the end of this, uh, this year. But what is more astonishing is the number of mobile phones that's out there in the world. So these 7 billion people are carrying 5 billion mobile phones. And pretty soon, I'm sure there'll be more people, more mobile phones than people out there in the world. It's kind of strange. But if you think about it, if you're carrying 2 or 3, then probably you're adding to the number. And you put that into context, it actually means that there are more people who actually have mobile phones than have access to clean toilet. But in reality, it may not be a big problem. Because if you happen to be one of those without a toilet but carrying a smartphone, you can always download this app. It's, on, it's, it's true, it's free, it's on App Store. And you can find, use it to find the nearest clean toilet that's available to you, even if you don't have one yourself. So I guess if you, if you let a person choose between a, mobile a smartphone and a clean toilet, he probably choose the smartphone. Kindle is, uh, I think it's only around for a couple of years. But last year, Amazon has sold more uh, Kindle books than their paperback and hard copy books combined. Um, and we know Amazon sells a lot of hard copy and paperbacks, enough to put um, bookstores like Borders out of business. And in fact, if you, if you think about it, uh, um, someone has, has said that we can have, if you look at a, a typical student from primary school to, um, from primary school to, to maybe the time they graduate university, you can, you can in fact load all their textbook they ever need to use into their iPad or some uh, smart devices and it will fit in perfectly nicely. So imagine all your books going into that 800 gram device. So moving a bit close to uh, where we are, um, this statistic is very recent. So as of, I think, as of January, we have 2.6 million Facebook users. And putting that in context, um, that we have about 5, billion, uh, 5 million, sorry, 5 million uh, people in Singapore, if you include the foreigners, uh, it's quite an astonishing number because out of the 5 billion, a lot of them are probably uh, IT illiterate, uh, migrant workers, and a lot of them are actually 13 year olds, uh, 12 year old and below who are not supposed to have an account, right? That's why I, that's why I, uh, I have a at home I have an 18 year old daughter, 
who happens to be taking her PSLA this year. And we have uh, the, the most number of uh, ownership, highest number of ownership in, ter in terms of um, mobile devices, smartphone devices, and laptop in, in Asia. So, so this, is, this is really the, the kind of um, learners whom you are going to deal with when you move into the classroom, um, either in primary school, secondary school, or even in, in university nowadays. Um, and they have grown to have this kind of expectation in terms of what they should get, because this is what the this is the life they have been leading, or whether it's on uh, on the internet or on the mobile devices. They expect things like they want things to be um, immediate, information immediate, personalized to them, show them only what they need. They don't care what other people think. They just want to know what you think they they need. They want to be connected, just like in Facebook, Twitter being able to stay connected with your friends and also maybe not, not real friends but people who happen to be uh, connected to you on Facebook as well as um, being able to collaborate because this ability to connect with, with their peers and like-minded people sort of open up their mind to collaborate with each other when they develop things. So you think about things like Wikipedia. That's a very good example of collaborative uh, creation of content. Think about open source software. Think about open courseware. So these are things that were, are publicly available and collaboratively developed through people, like-minded people who, may, who most likely are strangers to each other. And if you don't have all this, what you end up getting is really disengaged learners. Right? So they'll switch off and you find that your learning will no longer be as effective and as useful as you want it to be. So the message that we want to bring to you is, is basically just this. Technology is not going to change things. It's not the technology that changes things. It's the end users, the consumers, which is your learner, who's going to change things. And they demand it. So that's why a lot of uh, institutions around the world um, choose to work with us, because they understand that Blackboard, we come from an education background. Most of our applications were either developed within a university or by university students. So today I'm going to focus just on the one bit, the, the one below, which is Blackboard Mobile. So I'm going to jump out a bit from the... Okay, so now I'm in the, I'm locked into this mobile learn environment. Okay, Blackboard Mobile Learn. And if you're not aware, you guys have it actually in, at, at NIE. So do um, try it out, take a look, and uh, I'm sure there'll be instructions available to you how you can get it. But it's very easy. You can go. You just go, need to go to the App Store or the um, Google Marketplace and look up for Blackboard Mobile or Blackboard Mobile Learn or Mobile Learn. You should be able to find it. But what I'm going to show you today is uh, a few quick um, screens on what is available on this platform. So here what you see is a, is a dashboard that tells you very personalized information of what you need to attend to. So messages uh, or notifications that are sent out from the lecturer on homework that you need to hand out or things that is updated into the system. And of course you can go into your courses. So for example, now I'm a student enrolled in uh, the biology class for example. So I can go in and view my material on the mobile devices and also access multimedia content, like a movie. So if I don't want, I can throw them off the screen. And what is most, um, I think is more, more, most powerful about this platform is the ability to have two-way communication. So not only can you receive notification and access online content, you are able to engage in meaningful conversation with your peers through things like discussion forums. You can have a chat with someone on the, on the discussion forum. Or um, stealing on some of the examples that uh, Prof Lee and, and Dr. Sia have mentioned. Think about the scenario where, for example, the, the case of going to the botanical garden and doing observation and noting things down. Well, you can do that here by using the block 
So for example, I go into my uh, blogging tool. I can create a blog, right? Add a subject. And I can immediately pen down my observation as I go through my field trip at the botanical garden. And to add on to that, I can add an attachment. I can take a picture of uh, what I saw at the botanical garden. For example, a picture of you guys. Right? And I, I can use that. And once I upload this, Oh, I need to enter something. Hello. <laughs> and it's up. And immediately, your lecturer and your fellow classmate will be able to see this, whether they, they use their mobile phone or they use their um, laptop, they'll be able to see it instantaneously once you have all uploaded this. So this is, this is, it gives you an idea what is possible. Because the, the, the tool is there, it's really up to you as the educator, to think about what, how you want to use it and how you want to make best use of it. And I think uh, Dr. Sia's presentation gave you a very good idea of what is possible in, in terms of pedagogical applications for what we have available for you. So let me jump back to uh, the presentation and uh, wrap it up. So for those who are at NIE, definitely you can use the NIE Blackboard system and, and do your work and, and uh, try out the mobile feature. But if you happen to, uh, if you have, if, when you graduate from, if you are a teacher, student, a student teacher, if you graduate, what's going to happen? Well, not to worry. We have a free version that's available called, uh, at www.costsite.com. It's a free version and fully, feature, fully functional and fu it has all the full features, so including the mobile applications. So you can go to this website, create, your, create an account for yourself, and it's pretty easy because we allow for creation using um, all your normal face, uh, social networking accounts. You can create one account pretty quickly, and once you go in, it will provide you very, um, very clear instructions and, and, and a sort of a wizard style that allows you to dis uh, help you figure out what kind of course you want to create. So different kind of uh, cost theme and cost structure um, can be created out of the box for you. And of course, if you go to the mobile learn um, app, you can access the same cost on your mobile devices. So I would, I would really advise that for, for the student teachers when you go back to your school, you can try it out and, and use it with, with your students and, and, and see what you can do with it. I'm sure you'll be, they'll, you'll, you'll be amazed with what's possible. And finally, to wrap it up, let me just show you a quick one minute. Where does the education experience need to go? It's already mobile and getting smarter. It should make a classroom just the beginning. to make life easier and create connections. Extra tickets are now available for tonight's game. To help us make the right decisions. It should find you anywhere. No matter what role we play. Telling us how we're performing. We have seen a 5% increase in freshman retention over the year. It needs to simplify the day-to-day. -day. Okay, the funds have been transferred. Oh, great, thank you. Let me bring up a slide on that right now. This should... It should help us work together in new ways, in the classroom or anywhere else. Education experience should build 
on everyone's best. All right, with that, thank you everyone.